Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome to Tunisia's Locks, Beauty Tips, and Potpourri. Also known as the I Am Melanin Magic brand. Today we're talking about what to do when you become tired, exhausted, or you feel sort of like a wounded warrior when it comes to your hair. Thinking about daddy today, miss him, he's with me, but this was a song I grew up with, he used to play it every Saturday morning and wake us up and blast those 400 albums in the basement and my mom used to, it used to drive her crazy, but I loved it. And this is the, and the beat goes on, and the beat goes on. Yes, y'all, the beat goes on. Let's go ahead and get into it. What you're seeing here is a picture of Sheila, the lady from the channel from some time ago who was the thumbnail. Many of you may remember when I began talking about some of the issues with the small locks and some of the things that can cause hair foliage. Uh, when I began talking about small locks micro locks, sister locks, and some of the conditions under which the retightenings can create a lot of hair fall. She was one of the ladies who was kind enough to allow me to see what had happened to her hair, but only within the last two weeks, she sent me a beautiful update, letting me know that this is what her hair looked like now and that it was a result of my products um, her loctician who she loves and who does a wonderful job with her hair and prayer and so she really wanted me to see how happy and excited she was and she was really expressing gratitude for the I Am Melanin Magic products and since some of you all may actually remember her it was just a beautiful blessing that she reached out to give me this update and that I was able to see that text message um, it was very very delightful so hopefully uh, many of you out there who are still using the products and who use them loyally can continue with consistency to do the things for your hair that make all the difference in the world and to take some of the advice that I give you here on the channel as well as what will be in the ebook as you begin to rescript or rewrite your own hair narrative so that you can have a better outcome. But this is so beautiful because it goes to show you the extremes that you see in the picture, but that all is not lost. And with a concerted effort and a change in some of the rituals and some of the products that you put on your hair, you can definitely rebound. We thank you so much, Sheila. Are you tired of struggling with hair growth and thinning strands? Release the magic in your locks and tresses with I Am Melanin Magic Hair Oil. Premium blend of all natural ingredients, strengthens, restores, and revitalizes your hair for maximum health and growth. Don't let thinning hair straighten hair. Upgrade your hair care game today. I am Melanin Magic Hair. So, <clears throat> what I want to talk to you about today is how to manage frustration with your lock journey, regardless of the type of lock that you have. Okay, you may have traditional locks, sister locks, micro locks, whatever it is, knotted locks. How to manage frustration in general when you feel as though your back is up against the wall or you're not getting the results that you would actually like to have. The first thing I want to tell you is don't give up. Don't give up. Most of us, when we chose this journey, we were in the energy of shifting our life in a certain direction, changing our mindset. We wanted worry-free hair. We wanted another way to look and feel beautiful without all of the hassles that can come along with relaxers or maybe wigs or maybe other styles that you might have had in the interim. And so you got on this journey in the first place because you were committed to it. I would argue that most people who have locks today expected to have them for the long term and in a perfect world, they would have them for the long term. So these are the kind of things that I want to talk about today. And those 
issues um, are going to be of interest to those particular people who are in the audience of feeling a little bit unsure about maybe what's going on with their hair, but trying to make a decision that is best for them. So first and foremost, like I said before, don't give up. Where there's a will, there's always a way. So long as you are able to determine whether or not your hair is replenishing itself, your hair is regenerating itself. Where there's a will, there's a way. As long as your hair is still regenerating, it's still able to grow and you're not in dire straits, then you have options. Definitely do not give up. Be willing to avail yourself of your options. Stay in the game and see what your options actually are before you make a decision maybe that you can't turn away from. I speak to a lot of women. I spoke to one uh, a day ago who was at wit's end and wanting to go in the opposite direction and maybe get rid of her 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 locks. And I discouraged that because in looking at her hair, she hasn't really reached that point, although she's very frustrated with some things that have happened to her hair. She hasn't reached the point yet where I felt like she should give up. She still has hair. Her hair is still able to grow. It is showing an ability to bounce back. And those are the kind of things you want to look at. Is my hair still growing? Is my hair bouncing back? What are the things that I can actually do in terms of changing some of the habits and practices and rituals or what? are some of the avenues that might be available to me to keep me from being frustrated. So the second thing you want to look at is identifying what some of the things are that you feel are putting stress on your hair. What do you feel is causing the stress? Typically, when you have a smaller lock, most people are using uh, interlocking as a way to maintain those locks. When you have a larger size lock, some people who have traditional locks may still be using interlocking. Some of them may be palm rolling and doing other things in between the, the, the uh, relocking process. Look at your particular situation and see, are there things that you are doing that could be contributing to some of the problems that you are having? If you are retightening, let's say you have sister locks, micro locks, let's say if you're retightening and you're doing it, too frequently. If you have knotted locks and you're doing a lot of double knotting, then you're going to need to work on your knotting method and you're going to need to perhaps consider some other options. If you have traditional locks, is the palm rolling causing a particular issue? Are you palm rolling too frequently? Could you benefit from interlocking and then maybe interlock every six to nine months? I know that's what my daughter does. Ronnie no longer does palm rolling the majority of the time, unless she's in between her relocking sessions, what she's been doing is getting her hair interlocked at about every six to nine months. And that's working out really well for her. So don't be afraid to ask, what is it that maybe you can do to change? Don't not ask yourself the question because you don't feel like you have any options. You always have options. You can always pivot. You can always try something different and you can always reverse and go back in a different direction. Okay, so don't be afraid of looking at maybe a different loctician or perhaps maybe doing it yourself or perhaps just spreading out the uh, the the sessions that you have and giving your hair a little bit more time to rest, or then maybe even switching to a different lock, a different pattern. For example, let's say if you're working with sister locks and you have a reverse four pattern, which is a tighter pattern. Perhaps maybe you wanna to go to a three. Maybe you wanna to go to a pattern that is gonna make your uh, locks look a little bit less compressed. That's going to give your locks a, a typically a fuller look that will put uh, less tightness and less tension on the actual lock. Maybe that's something you want to consider. Some of you have done that. Let's say, for example, you continuously are having multiple locticians work on your hair and you haven't been able to find someone 
who you are satisfied with and your primary concern at this point is not having a tight retightening, one where you're having to uh, take medication. I spoke this to a lady last week who had to take medication for two days after having a uh, retightening session because her hair was hurting too much. If that's a problem that you're having and you've tried several different locticians, it may be time to consider really seriously taking on your own hair care regimen or getting someone else and training them how to do your hair. You would be surprised, and this may sound crazy to a lot of people, but you all remember when I moved down here out in the middle of the boondocks, I was this close to getting ready to do that because I was tired of taking the long trips back and forth and having to rearrange my schedule. I was going right over to the high school. I was getting ready to pluck me out of high schooler who loved doing hair, who was already braiding in her spare time, or perhaps maybe interning in a shop or from a family of people who were constantly doing hair. Or maybe she sits out on the weekends and does corn rolls for her nieces and nephews, whatever the case is. I was going to get that young lady, bring her into my house and teach her exactly how I wanted her to do my hair. And I was gung-ho about that. You'll be surprised the number of aspiring cosmetologists or aspiring natural hairstylists that you have right in your community. People who are not so etched into a way of doing things that they're not willing to continue to learn or to pivot and to make changes. I used to say early when I started this channel, a lot of times when you find an individual who is a trainee, so to speak, even if they're a sister locks um, trainee, a lot of times those consultants are a lot more uh, ambitious about building their clientele. They tend to be less indoctrinated and more willing to experiment and more willing to uh, be open to the feedback that you may give them or be open to aligning with some of the things that you may want. This is something that is really worth considering because interlocking is very easy to do regardless of the type of rotation you have. It is so easy to do. And at that point in your particular journey, you're more concerned about how your hair is progressing and whether or not you're able to give your hair ease, then you should be with whether or not someone uses a particular tool and whether or not that tool is going to define whether or not you still have a certain type of lock. Be concerned about what it's going to take to preserve your sanity, what it's going to take to stave off long-term hair loss, and what it is that you may need to do in order to be able to, to, to bring this person in and teach them what you want to teach them. Now, you're not just going to go in and just get anyone. You're actually, and shout out to, to the beautiful Lorraine. I, I saw her a couple weekends ago and she had an install on her beautiful thick head of hair and is wanting to pivot at this point and try some different things. She was charged for the full length of her uh, sister locks and she has about five inches on some locks of loose hair at the bottom. And so we were discussing what maybe some of her options were and she's considering having her granddaughter to do some of what I was showing her to do when we were sitting together because these are things that are very easy. They don't take a rocket scientist and while you may not be comfortable doing it for yourself, you'd be amazed at some of the skills that a lot of these young people have today and have always had in our community who are willing to take something that you teach them and take it to another level or take something that you teach them along with what it is that you want them to do in the implementation and successfully facilitate it, especially if you're not willing. And the beautiful thing is you get to shape them. You get to shape them and you get to impart uh, important aspects of your own mindset about hair into what it is that they may do to help save you. So consider giving that, give it a try, give it a try. For others of you, who may have experienced uh, your hair loss in certain areas of your hair. Don't be afraid to focus on a particular area of your head and to do something different with that particular area of your head before actually giving up. Maybe, for example, and you've heard about um, 
I don't know if you all have heard that Sister Locks is now um, or has come out with an, an, an extra large lock, which may be a better option for a lot of people and can contribute to probably a lot of positive outcomes that can shift from some of the, the stories that many of you have shared over the years with regard to a smaller lock. It It should not be something that is difficult for you to imagine. Keep in mind that in an area of your hair where you want to try something new, it's perfectly okay. It's perfectly okay to experiment with your own hair and to see what your own hair will do in certain situations so that you can make better decisions about your hair overall. This is very, very important because you are going to be best in a lot of ways at observing what's going on with your particular hair, with your particular pattern, with your particular texture, with what it is that you can tolerate. You're going to be the best person to pay attention to the minutia, to the tiny details of what can make a tremendous difference. So you can choose an area of your hair that's less visible, for example, and you can try different things in that area of your hair. You may want to try doing a retightening of a few locks. You may want to try if you have a lot of hair that's growing outside of the lock. You may want to try braiding that lock down and putting a knot on the end. Shout out to BJ as well. You may want to try doing that to see how that lock will develop to determine what your options may be for the rest of your hair. You may decide to take that hair that's growing outside of the lock and to interlock it, okay? And then to put a knot on the end so that you don't have to worry about slippage and then go back later and knot up the knot, okay? Or knot up the lock. You can try a million trillion different things. You may want to try what does a two-point rotation look like versus a three-point rotation versus a four-point rotation and a reverse four-point rotation on your particular hair. These are things that an average loctician is not going to have the time in your appointment to do for you, or some may not necessarily be willing, but these are the things that you can do on your own on the side to give yourself more of an advantage to give yourself into uh, uh, give yourself a glimpse into what taking a different path may look like versus giving up on your journey, taking your locks out and starting over. You will always hear me say, as I've said on this channel, when you start having issues with your locks or you become dissatisfied because of something that's going on, you want to first be able to establish: Is my hair still growing? Am I experiencing a level of hair loss, thinning, or alopecia where my hair is not able to grow? Once you establish that your hair is still growing, hopefully, then you want to determine how long is that growth cycle in my hair growth or the hair that I'm experiencing, how healthy is that hair? How long is that growth cycle going to take before that hair that's coming in, that new hair is strong enough for me to be continue or to begin actually locking it again or retightening again or doing whatever it is that you wanna do? Because ideally, if you've lost hair and you've had thinning, once you can establish that your hair is still able to bounce back and be resilient, then you're gonna to have to give your hair a rest you're going to have to give it a rest whether you want to or not. And there are things that you can do in the interim. Shout out to Sheila who put up a wonderful video in the Discord of a lady who was talking about how to uh, move beyond even uh, up to six months worth of new growth without having to uh, relock or retighten. Okay, and I hopefully we'll be able to, to post the link to that in one of the next videos because I do want to share that information but you want to be able to give your hair the rest that it needs without fearing that you're going to lose the hair it ends up if you're afraid that you're going to lose the hair look at it like this it becomes the lesser of two evils do I want to lose hair and destroy my follicles um, permanently in some cases for some people by continuing the rigorous uh, retightening or relocking process or am I willing to give my hair a little bit of rest and observe what my hair can tolerate and determine what level of maintenance in between that retightening or that relocking I may have to do to preserve the sanctuary of the hair and to lose little to no hair at all? That's worth actually looking into. 
It's also worth looking into just trimming your locks by a few inches. I've talked to a few sisters who are doing that as well to take additional weight off of their hair. And I've talked about that a lot in the past, taking weight off of your hair once you determine what is causing the problem. Uh, another sister I was talking to was, was spending too much time styling her hair or styling her hair in a way where she didn't think it was actually potentially problematic, but actually it was contributing to possible thinning and the compression of her locks down the length of the lock because it was happening too much and it was happening in conjunction with other things that were also stressing the hair. So immediately, last but not least, take the stress off of the hair. That means no color. Okay, if you're someone that's been coloring, that means giving your retightening or your relocking sessions, giving your hair a break, even if you're knotting, giving your hair a break, especially if you've been experiencing trauma with your knotting and you're not having the best of luck with your knotting and you've been doing that for some time and you're not liking the way your hair is looking, it's time to take a pause and to take some corrective action. Shout out to those of you who want to take the Righteous Hair course and have taken the Righteous Hair course. Um, we're doing a wonderful job over there. I'm getting a lot of great commentary. Many of you are expressing to me uh, the gratitude that you are experiencing. Um, you're expressing to me the uh, wonderful results that you are getting now with using my particular process. It's helping you a lot. You're grateful for that and I'm grateful for you as well. I'm grateful to be here and to be in a space where I've been able to help. Um, in short, no matter what it is you're dealing with, first and foremost, don't give up. No matter what it is you're dealing with, back off of the things that you've been doing that can contribute to the stress. Be willing to consider other options. Never feel as though you don't have options, especially if you want to keep your locks. Especially if you want to keep your locks. A lot of times, small sacrifices can be made that at the time that you're having to make them, you may not want to do, you may not want to cut your locks. You may not want to wait longer between retightenings. You may not want to consider doing it yourself. You may not want to find another loctician if you're not able to get your appointments in or if you're not satisfied with the level of service or if it's hurting too much or if the communication is not what it needs to be. You may not be in a space where you're willing to consider those things, but consider the alternative of not considering those things. Hopefully I've given you some food for thought. You're with Tunisia Ali of Tunisia's Locks, Beauty Tips, and Potpourri. And for those of you who have not purchased my book, Manifesting Your Masterpiece, you can get it on Amazon.com. For those of you who want to join me over on Spiritually Initiated and Crown, the spiritual channel, we'd love to have you. Have a beautiful rest of your day, and I will talk to you soon.